Okay, hello to you there out there in the world, planet Earth. This is RG Watts here with an idea. Okay, it is the 31st of December 2018 at half past seven in the evening here in the UK. And the idea is what a wonderful idea for a sci-fi movie and also for a video game that's the idea this is something that i've had sitting in my drawer for a couple of years <clears throat> adding to it bit by bit and trying to get the story uh knocked up together to a reasonable amount that it is presentable now it the the idea obviously it needs a full book and i'm no good at writing a book for crying out sake and i thought it is too good to waste to be honest with you i think it's a fantastic idea i have not come across it anywhere in science fiction uh although i don't read a lot of books on sci-fi right it might already be out there i don't know uh, but i certainly haven't come across it and no one ever speaks of this as a subject as an idea for uh, a story in sci-fi so this is going to be just a presentation and i'm going to be reading that which i've written because i've got no pictures there's nothing to see this end it is a description which you will have to use your imagination to piece together what i'm trying to present so let's try and just do just that what a fantastic idea for a sci-fi film and video game it's called the medusa it should be m-e i spelt that wrong but never mind but the medusa it is like the man of war um in the oceans right a jellyfish okay with a great big dome at the top and tentacles trading down underneath so right say hello to the ocean of space i don't know whether you have ever come across that expression before the ocean of space because it is like a huge vast ocean with life in it in its forms right the ocean of space i quite like that it's uh yeah so anyway um let's try and read this and see if we can get an idea of what i'm trying to create here Right, the date is 2525. Colony ships are venturing out across the galaxy. Huge ships with thousands aboard. Leaving our solar system in sets of ten. A million souls in all inside 20 mile long and 10 mile across cylinder type ships. In its interior, it is a mini earth. They set up refueling operations at a designated solar system to collect fuel and other resources. A ship sets up orbit around a selected gas giant, whilst the other ships are elsewhere in the solar system doing the same. It will take a year to complete the refueling. The gas giant is as large as Jupiter. <clears throat> then something extraordinary takes place. Slowly, a light appears near the gas giant, quite large, bright, and is observed as red for several each day, Earth days. Then, majestically, gracefully, slowly, over several days, a shape begins to take shape. The shape begins to take shape. It is vast, a domed, if I spelled that right, domed shaped structure resembling a Medusa jellyfish back on Earth. The dome and is, is calculated to be four times the size of Earth, with the tentacles extending to below to at least eight times the size of Earth. The light aurora around it fades, 
to reveal the most beautiful sight anyone has ever seen in space. Everyone is in awe of it. It is the first real alien intelligent contact us humans would make. We come to learn. From the tentacles, it gathers its sustenance from gas giants. It comes across. It has the ability to use warp drive, used mainly to get out of harm's way. A supernova or gamma ray bursts, etc. It has no enemies big enough to harm it. But it does have parasites, type life forms that feed off of it, that live in the tentacles, and is in constant battle against it against them, sorry. Inside the dome structure there are compartments big enough to hold worlds, the size of Earth and larger. Complete ecosystems thrive with mountains, oceans, seas, forests, deserts, layered skies. The outer shell of the dome is hundreds of miles thick and keep out all harmful rays and temperatures from outer space. As on Earth, there are thousands of types of creatures that populate it within different compartments of the dome and even along the tentacle structure which is sheltered from outer space. Life is peaceful 90% of the time, but at times the external parasites migrate into the dome and battles are fought with them by the Medusa and the life forms until they are vanquished. The Medusa and the life forms that live within live a symbiotic relationship. Some life forms clean the interior by harvesting and living off the decaying parts of the wall, which is continually being regenerated. From the utmost roof of the inner dome, decaying parts of the wall fall slowly to the floor, hundreds of miles below, and land as flakes every hundred or two hundred years. It is a time of rejoicing and bountiful harvest for the creatures living there. There is no night there. The dome is lit internally by living organisms which radiate many colors, and so you get a sense of sunrise and sunset as they blossom and wane. The aurora borealis can be seen high in the upper layers of sky. This also happens across the exterior of the dome. Medusa is a very beautiful sight to see from outside. Ripples of light cascade along its exterior, just like jellyfish on Earth. The Medusa starts its life on planets as the largest of organisms to be found. It starts its life on suitable planets, low gravity. There are several different types. Some of them live in the water, coral-type creatures, size of a person, and others live on land large bulbous mushroom type plant type creatures. Then after hundreds of years growing in size, some several miles across, it grows bladders that fill with helium or gas that is lighter than the current atmosphere. It then takes on its next phase. I probably spelt phase wrong, right? And along other things. <clears throat> this is not a blinking, uh, well-written uh, uh, explanation. This is why I could never write a book, right? Um, as a flying type jellyfish, right? So you've got the atlas, you've got the picture of a, a, a jellyfish type structure. It's not a jellyfish. It's, it's the same sort of structure. Uh, it's organic. Takes in the final phase like a man of war type creature, having only eight or nine short tentacles, but it is still huge. Symbiotic life forms are, all, are inside already from the planet within its dome structure, like algae on Earth, they feed the Medusa. After several thousands of our Earth years, the Medusa has grown immense, several hundred miles across. At this stage, vast bladders are formed for its final departure of the host planet. Gracefully, it ascends into space and propels itself out of orbit, disguiding the bar bladders. The final phase is underway. Over thousands of years, it continues to grow. Inside, the multitude of life forms are set in an environment suitable for them. Right? So you get this picture, right? And as said earlier, when they've come across 
the the producer it is pretty much final stage that's how it is for good knows how many eons it lives for um is the size of four earths or so it could be larger if you want it to be larger it could be larger it could be the size of neptune and so the interior of that dome could be more compartments there could be more sections within that dome area and along the tentacles as well that could be habitable for all forms of life because it's just huge areas the earth right you know you go up what well, just a couple of miles right right five miles you're at the top of everest after that when you can't breathe then then after that you know it's very very it's you know you're starting to see space then and just below you know well just above uh, 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 Everest height you've got these cloud layers so within this dome structure would be which would you would fit earth inside one of the compartments right because it's the size of four <coughs> right so it is quite the thing so not to come across this right you would basically in the sci-fi movie you would come across it and then you would travel inside it and you would discover the life that was within the domes right and uh in the game you would do just the same too it would be a discovery type thing more than anything because really the only enemy that you would have would be the uh, parasites on the outside so how we come across them in 2525 uh, we have colonized our solar system we have warp drive we are venturing out into near space we have developed organic space suits so much so we no longer never need small craft to go off world or to enter it we can you know we have avatars man <laughs> we can get off planet without needing a ship man yeah that's uh 25 25 25 right that's a few years ahead of us right for group travel however large organic organic ships right carrying thousands of personnel are used being fueled by the sun or gas giants scoop technology is used just like the medusa does although it's not the same it would be similar scooping up the gases and whatnot that would give it uh, what it would live off Th that is when we first come across the Medusa. The year is 2555. A huge expedition is venturing out some 30 year light years or so to promise for, to a promising hab habitable zone outside our solar system. Stopping off at a star system to refuel as a gas giant, Medusa warps in to do just that too, replenishing itself. To us, it is the most beautiful thing we have ever come across and instantly reminds us of the jellyfish we know back on Earth. Time passes as the refueling takes place, which gives them time to explore. Closer inspection draws much ore as they go out in small pod type ships to go and explore the Medusa as it sat there. But then they are attacked. Yes, but the external pass by the external parasite life forms, similar in size to our individual organic life pod ships, but they come from a mothership which is huge, similar in size to our mothership. Mothership. Our shield holds out and the attack is repelled. Right, okay, I'll take a breath. And back in a minute to continue uh, with the final part of this. Okay, let us resume. After many hours of fighting off the parasites and happily no casualties, something spectacular happens. The Medusa lets out a wave of energy, an aurora wave of energy, beautiful in color, and vaporizes the parasites in our area along with several of the motherships. We are relieved and left in wonder. Back on our mothership, a message is being received. It is the Medusa. It is transmitting to our life pod ships as well, who fought off the parasites. 
the main screen on the command deck as well. What is being seen is a man in a room similar to one of our one of our control decks on ship. He is standing by a window looking out. We are panned in closer. He turns to look into the camera. He dressed he is dressed in a white suit buttoned up the front with a collared neck, pure white hair brushed back on longish, well kept beard and moustache. He looks old, with gentle eyes and with graceful demeanour. Greetings, humans, he says in perfect English, smiling and with gestured outstretched hands, is warm and inviting. I am Medusa. It seems human we are in the one si we are on one side. It seems humans we are on the same side. We don't like paradise par parasites. I thank you in your help in clearing a few from the sector you were in. In gratitude for your help, let me help you. Sorry about all the stuttering. The engineering calm chimes in and says, Sir, you are not going to believe this, uh, but uh, I don't get it, sir. We are another two months away from filling our tanks of fuel. The readings are now showing that we are now full. Okay, engineer, thanks for that report. It's okay, carry on. Well, okay, but sir, it's okay, engineer, carry on, right? Yeah, you get the idea. The Admiral of our mothership also dressed exactly the same as the figure on the screen, but in rich blue and gold trimmings, answers in thanks and wonderment. I'm in awe of the beauty of your ship, Medusa, and thank you for the fuel, a greater gift than I gave you. We were defending ourselves, knowing nothing of your situation. We are in debt to you, Medusa. A short, jovial laugh comes from Medusa. Yes, of course. No matter, Admiral, gesturing with an inquiry of the Admiral's name. Admiral Ashad, I think, is it? Yes, of course it is. Sorry. Admiral Ashad, let me explain. <clears throat> the kind of words you uttered about my um, ship, well, uh, it, it is not a ship. It is me. You see, the image of me as you see it on the screen is a projection suitable for your viewing as to ca not cause alarm. I have learned your languages and have accessed your database, know of your intentions to colonize a suitable planet, and delved into some of the post-turbulent history. A peace pursuing life born, but will defend itself if attacked. Sting like a bee is a correct term to be used, I think. That would summonize your species, Medusa said, and then went on to say, I love your sense of wonderment, human. It is something else we have in common. Because of this, I extend a hand of visitation to you. My suggestion, send a delegation who will be greeted by a suitable guide to guide you to the interior of the dome. There you can see much of what I am in wonderment of as well. Agreed? Full protection will be given if you need it. <clears throat> Admiral, Admiral Ashab was in all struck again and stumbled over his words. But an immediate yes was given in reply. Yes, of course, thank you, was uttered. Good, Medusa replied. I will greet you when you, were he you get here. With that, the screen went blank, but replaced with coordinates for a rendezvous with a vessel. No time was given. For several days went by, and the screen opened again for Medusa. All this was addressed to all 100 of the expedition crew that was set up for the venture. Very human in his expression, Medusa apologized for the delay and then went on to say that a suitable area of the dome was selected for their viewing as it was the closest to our environment and the air had been tuned for breathability. Ah, okay, all is set. See you when you get here. With a gentle smile, the screen faded. Screen flickered on again with the time of rendezvous with the, gr the guide vessel. A solemn, sizable... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh dear, can't do anything without a cough. A sizable delegation was formed of all races. They had with them over a hundred set forth. To their utter astonishment, they were greeted with a ship organic resembling Medusa, emanating beautiful lights huge in size, a hundred miles or so in size, similar in shape to the Medusa. Very beautiful. 
and a very multitude of smaller organic ships. They also were huge, some 40 miles in size. A growing force field, a glowing force field surrounded each one which emanated colors like the Medusa. As the delegation ship set forth to follow the lead ship, the smaller ships fell behind as escort defense. Slowly, majestically, they approached Medusa. Each step forward was awe-inspiring, taking in its vastness. Its color changing so beautifully was the sight. The view of what the delegation were seeing was broadcast on all decks of the mothership. There was no sense of fear, only awe and wonderment. It took Two days to reach what looked like an entrance situated between the tentacles. Then on the third day, they were completely surrounded by the upper parts of the tentacle area and surrounded by soft color changing from turquoise to amber to soft greens, all the while strings of multiple colored lights which would majestically emanate across the walls of the tentacle. Astonishing in beauty. On the fourth day, they reached what looked like a central part of the inner structure. A vast entrance came into view in a haze of mistiness. A beautiful turquoise blue lit up the area. A tunnel formed. This tunnel was thousands of miles across, many thousands of miles long. In the f On the fifth day, light started to emanate from the direction they were heading. It grew brighter. The walls receded away on all sides, making way for a vast domed area with tunnels leading off from it. Day six, the guide vessel veered off to the left, selecting a tunnel. This was smaller, but still hundreds of miles across. Lights could be seen on the walls on all sides, through the haze, and what looked like road systems. Day 7, this tunnel also receded away on all sides, opening out to light blue skies and clouds, and land on all sides could be seen, with mountains in the distance, rivers, lakes, vegetation, some green, some red, some autumn in colour. The guide vessel moved across the landscape, which gave qual quality viewing of what looked like cities below. Up ahead was a vast expanse of water, an ocean. Day seven, the vessel came to a halt off the shores of the ocean. The whole time since leaving our mother mothership, Medusa had been in consultation and discussions with Am Admiral Ashad, who then informed delegation crew and kept them informed. The gravity was similar to that of that on Earth. Outside temperatures were like a warm spring day and the air was breathable. Utterly amazed were the crew. The delegation ship did not come along unprotected, having some sixty fighter life pods and armed with shields, devastating weaponry. The Papas parasites would be no match for these ships. The coordinates of the selected landing site below was displayed to the NAF's crew. Slowly they descended. That is far as I got. <coughs> and Excuse me. At this point, I really do apologize. I'm no good at reading. I made a real hash of that. But I don't know any other way of doing this apart from reading it out and displaying it in a video because I want to get this out. I want to get it out to people. I leave it on YouTube. Somebody will come across it. Maybe think of a good idea. Yeah, go and make a movie out of this. Go and make a game out of this. Um... The outstanding part of this is it's very, very beautiful. It's, that has got to come across as the main thing because it is so vast and huge. Once you're sort of like in the inner part of where the tentacles are, which is nearly the size, size of Earth, the area, it's got its own atmosphere. It's got its own layers of atmosphere, right? And there, along the walls on the inner on the sides, there are life forms living in this in this world right and they don't they don't really know about anything else right so it's, it's pretty much like a planet and then on the inside of the dome it, it is worlds in themselves and the, what you could think up like in no man's sky this is what I was thinking. 
the No Man's Sky team could do this in the No Man's Sky format, right? Have this type of creature, I'm not saying to have it in No Man's Sky, but in a completely n another game, but like No Man's Sky, procedurally generated. And so you'd have like these four worlds or something. Uh, and then Medusa, they're not alone. They could have lots of Medusas and they would all be different, right? And they would, you know, the, you could have adventures where they've been to certain parts of the galaxy, which you could have all sorts of adventures and ideas of what they've been following something that would re guide them to uh, uh, like what they would call a paradise where all the resources are abounding and they would be uh, ever rejuvenating as well. So you would live in a, a, a a harmonious part of the galaxy and that's where they're heading and they're following all these leads that's an idea right and they've come across other life forms as well that they tell you about and then you know uh my god yes there is so much that could be done with this this is a basic description of this I mean, a, a good part of the game would be, you know, you would go up inside this uh, area through the tentacles and you could go off and land on one of the tentacle arms and there would be a whole world there, you know, <laughs> apart from inside the four domes, you know? Yeah, so that's the basic idea of this a fancy fantastic idea for a sci-fi movie or video game and i think that hello games as they've done with no man's sky i would like to see it in that format you know it's it, the way they do the, the way the world is uh um it's well it, it's not it's not like in real life like star citizen elite dangerous or uh, x4 they're like for like real life no man's sky is not it's like a cartoon it's not like a car i can't think of the ways it's it's a fantasy uh uh layout you know don't know how to describe it really but it's not like it is in real life the others they strive for reality this is what it looks for real like you know whereas no man's sky it's fantasy so i i would think that this would go well with that sort of fantasy format yeah um <clears throat> but there we are i think i'll leave that there there's probably a hundred things i could say but droning on and on and on is not going to uh, uh get things uh further along the road so there we are i'm gonna leave that there what a fantastic idea for a sci-fi movie and a sci-fi game end of recording oh yes and happy new year <laughs>